All right, so um, before we get started, um, I just wanted to take a little time. I, I sent you all the draft minutes from the um, July meeting, and I wanted to kind of do a little bit of, of level setting around what we're doing and give you some other context um, around the letter and what mo more importantly, ultimately, what, what it is old. Uh, so, you know, as to, as to the minutes, I'm sure you all read um, Brian's well surmised uh, piece at the end where he talked about, you know, one of the things that the board really wants to do is be a provocateur um, and, and move this, this conversation around structural racism, um, funding for human services uh, needs and, um, you know, um, policing, uh, community policing, and, and the need for reform to the council. Um, and so I think that that's something that we need to keep in mind as we think about this letter. Um, I think the other, you know, other context to think about is ultimately what is the goal of, what other parts of the goal do we need to consider as we, as we look at this letter? Um, and then also, Last night, there was a presentation to council, and I'm not sure if you were all, if you all had a chance to see it, uh, around the city's finances. And we are currently in, uh, we currently have uh, an $11 million shortfall for 2020. Um, and so when you think about the consequences of asking, um, uh, you know, 10% um, what that'll mean uh, for overall budget issues and particularly the public safety fund, um, including and up to the laying off of police officers uh, and other police staff. So I think we just want to make sure that we, we think about what is the ultimate goal of this letter and what do we want to ensure that happens. And then I guess the last thing is what, what other options do we have as a board around how we move forward the conversation around um, equity and diversion and inclusion and, and, and ending racism uh, in our own, you know, uh, for that, lack of a better word, our own home. Um, yeah. So those are just things to, to think about as we move forward with this conversation. With that being said, um, I'd love to uh, one or how do we do we want to do you want me to pull up um madeline's letter deanne's letter? so i just kind of wanted to get from the board want to open up for discussion and then also guidance on how to how do we we look at those letters or those revisions i mean i think i would be in favor of looking at madeline's letter first yep. okay all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up yours first madeline Okay. So it'll be on the screen here. So I'm going to scroll back up and we'll just scroll down slowly. And so I'll give you a chance everybody to read. Oh, that was a little too fast for me, Alberto. Sorry. Thanks. I'll move back. Um, so I, I really like that 
um, Madeline. I think the only thing I'm worried about, you know, based on the feedback, as I understood it from the meeting, was that there was a strong, um, I think that at least a couple of people really felt like we needed to completely separate the police aspect, which is not my view. But if, if it if that is the conscience of the group, um, then we probably need to address that first. Um, did you guys have a different impression than I did about that? Um, do you think everybody was on board with, with suggesting that the funding come from the police department? I don't know that everybody was on board with it, but I felt like people were open to that, but just had some concerns about it, but maybe there were a couple of people that were hesitant to that. Okay. I thought they wanted, uh, I didn't get the sense that they wanted to back away from that. I got the sense that they wanted us to be a little more, a little, um, I have uh, put more teeth in, in not demanding it, but uh, be a little bit more direct in Perfect. what we were asking. That was um, my take. Okay. Well, then, could, then could I could be wrong. Yeah. Could be wrong, though. But. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I got it. I felt that there was at least a couple of board members that did not, um, did not think that that having a direct ask from the police was uh, the best way to move forward, um, and to and to. You know, in, in all honesty, my concern is that, again, going back to the question about what is it that we want to achieve, um, is would, would doing that, uh, would that make it a non-starter conversation at council? Yeah. So I, I think the letter has two primary goals. One is to increase funding for human services. Right. Um, and second goal is to ask council and the community to consider the value proposition as a community where the money is. And that um, I think it's the conscience of, you know, this inflection point in society that funds be moved from uh, the standard policing model into more of a human service model. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we have to put that in somewhere. Um, and that's why, you know, I like your edit, edits, Madeline. I wonder to satiate the people who are like, no, we, we can't attack the police. We add a clause in there that says, you know, hey, our primary goal is to increase human service funding. If, uh, you know, we don't want to create a non-starter by bringing up the police department. But maybe we do. I mean, maybe, you know, people just need to get over it. And <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, yeah, the majority of people were, I mean, yeah, there were a few people that, I, a couple of people that were very, uh, leaning very heavily towards not touching anything police related. Um, but then I thought the majority, the rest of the group, uh, basically said, you know, they didn't disagree with them, but at the same time, they didn't uh, stop us. <laughs> True. So, so that brings up a good question. You know, this letter says the board unanimously. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can take uh, that. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, I think that's a great, a great thing. Yeah, just take out the word unanimously, yeah, and then all we need is a majority vote, and then we're right. good, right? Yeah. And if, we did. If, that, if that's did. the case... Sorry, go ahead, Alan. No, no, I just said we did have a majority vote, but it wasn't, yeah, that was just strike that. Well, you know, because at, at the same time, the people that were still very sympathetic uh, toward the police and not touching it, at the same time, they didn't absolutely say unequivocally, no, don't do that. But they just said how they felt. And actually how they felt was no different than how we felt. They've done True. a great job, yes. And yeah, they've done a great job. And you know, if they're if the if we're gonna look at, you know, re uh, uh defunding by definition of what that means, 
then I didn't get the sense that they would just, I don't know. I didn't get the sense that they were like 100, no, you can't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. They were like, well, you know, they've done such a great job and da 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 and I don't know. I didn't get the sense that they were, I don't know. But yeah, you're to take unanimously out because they did voice concern two people that well, I remember. If, if, I hope I'm not interrupting you, Madeline, but my thought was that if we end up getting unanimous vote on this, we can always move to amend the letter to include the word unanimous at the Yeah. 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 So I, I'm not I'm not uh, hung up on any part of this letter. <laughs> I wrote it as a as a as a platform for a starting point, a springboard, so we didn't have to start at ground zero. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess Aliberto, we could just take out the word unanimous, and if by chance it is unanimous, we'll add that back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, easy. And I think you know the the reading that Polly sent that. Um, that email and having some clarity around the funding that a lot of the programs that people like about the police department, like lead and core and angel initiative aren't funded mm -hmm. with the money we're asking to be pulled from anyway, that it's grant grant funding, those, mm -hmm. those programs. So right. um, as far as I can tell all the programs, people are like, this is great The we want the police department to keep doing, it's not attached to um, the general fund. Oh, right, that's Aaron. good. That's good. Yeah. Which means, I mean, so to, to, to this letter's point, right? Um, you know, I, um, I don't think it's a one size fits all a solution approach that Longmont Public Safety provides. In other words, you know, the, the lead and core are, are, uh, are, are grant funded and they do provide a different level of service than necessarily straight out police service that would come to a call. Um, you know, they, they do bring them in. So, so I want to be careful about that. Uh, I mean, I understand what you're saying, Madeline, that you, you, you get the police, but in long run, you get the police and uh, right. you, get, you, get, you get a mental health provider uh, along yeah. with them. Um, so I just want to make sure that we, we're, we're careful about, about that. And again, I'm going to, I'm going to go back to, to your point. Um, Graham, so if if can you can you speak a little more about that value proposition piece? I mean, I understand the increased housing, human services and funding, but I'd like to learn a little more about what the increased value or the value proposition conversation is. Right. So what you can tell what people care about based on what they spend money on. You know, you want to know where somebody's values are look at their checkbook or look at their bank statements, you know? And I think it's all the more true with a society or the city of Longmont, where do we put our money? And so I think I vaguely remember somebody reading in the meeting that there's like $25 million allocated to the police department and that when there are budget cuts, that department doesn't get cut. And the community service and safety fund or whatever, I'm probably misnaming it, only got, you know, like three or 400,000. And so to me, that signals a value proposition or, or it tells me where this community, you know, wants its energy, its money, its attention. And so I think this ask is not just about dollars. This ask is about saying this community values meeting the basic human needs of its people first and foremost. And that that is inevitably going to reduce crime and increase safety and be a more genuine expression of, you know, what we value, you know, and that is taking care of each other. So, um, okay. well, so let me, let me, let me just say a couple of things. One is, and I don't know what, I, I would need to go back and look at the public safety because that $21 million may also include EMT, and fire, because in Longmont, those are police, fire, and EMT are all combined. So okay. I had some notes from the, the meeting. I mean, I don't know if these figures are correct, but I had written down that 21.5 million per year, but that including public safety, it was 53 million a year. 
right? So That's I, what, I don't, yep. yeah. And so I don't, I don't know that I always look at. And then as far as our human service funding, we get, we got 2.37 and we're looking at 2.7% um, of general fund. This year it was around one point, and I'm, I'm thinking it's, I need to go back and look. I think it's a one point something million. Um, and of course, half of that has gone to homeless services. And then the other half uh, went to um, the human services funding that we have, right? So I just want to make sure that we, we it's, it, you know, it's, it's much more than three or 400,000. Um, that okay. being said, um, I, I, I think it's important that, that we, we share that, that the board is very much committed to increasing human service funding. I just want to make sure that we, 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 we know what we're, that we're, we got our, our facts straight, you know, as far as what our funding is. Yeah. And I, you know, I understand the drive and the burden to get, you know, have informative detailed information here, but I also feel like on some level that city council's job mm -hmm. to work that out. And that this is just, you know, like Madeline said, a springboard to start the conversation. So maybe, maybe we lead the, the lead the letter in with just saying, hey, a human services needs more funding and true before COVID, but now it's all the more true. Right. Um, and we know this because we're having a needs assessment done and preliminary top line reports show that we're headed into a crisis. And so it's time for, you know, city council to, to send money to human services. And we think, <laughs> that it should come from the police department. Um, uh, and I, 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 right. okay. So if we uh, perhaps focus on paragraph one, two, three, four, paragraph five. Could you scroll down for us, Alberto? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Did you guys... I didn't send, did I send you guys a letter? No, you sent just to me. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, okay. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, yeah, I didn't want to, I wanted right, you to yeah, maintain, right. uh, yeah, decide how you wanted it distributed, but I don't have a problem if you want to share it. Well, I think part of, part of the issue is, 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 and I don't understand the whole Colorado sunshine laws, but I think part of the issue is we want to make sure that, you know, this is being done in, like this, a noticed meeting. Uh, and you can have individual um, things, but if we're going to discuss something that's going to the board, I think we need to discuss it as a group that, you know, um, in a recorded meeting. So I think it's just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that we that we stay in those boundaries. That's why I didn't send that's why I asked him to send it to me okay. and then I could, I could, I could show it. Mm hmm So, uh, which is, is that? So I was thinking that you, what you were talking about is, is would be more uh, probably, um, uh, probably elaborated on that more in paragraph five. One, two, three, four, yeah, five. Talk about the underserved members of the community. Yeah. All right. I mean, that <clears throat> says it. I, I think we need short, shorter is better. Um, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So I think the other question that I would have for this group is, and, and maybe it is council's job, or maybe this group's job after this, but, you know, um, I, I have a, I have a concern about, you know, the work that police is doing in particular with core and lead, I believe is what is mentioned in that first sentence, you know, trauma-informed de-escalation and harm reduction. And then the question is, if not them, then who, in my mind? Um, uh, so can we add a sentence there that says, we recognize and encourage the police's work along the lines of lead core and angel initiative and uh, do not want to see funding pulled from those programs? So if I can speak to that, that was actually in, in my letter. That's one of the things right. I added. So what I added in my letter was um, 
that we recognize that certain programs such as Lead Corn and the Angel Initiative are excellent programs which should not be terminated. And then I added in, however, council should explore whether these programs will be better operated by another department or by an outside nonprofit. Something like that, I think might work. But Graham, did you say that the funds that support those programs are not associated with what we're asking for anyway, right? Well, it is grant funding, but then Aliberto mm -hmm. just said that it's police and the so which leads me to believe that maybe they're you know somebody who's on payroll for the police department spends 20 hours on a grant funded initiative that justifies their full-time employment i i guess i just don't know about the details there the details uh, but yes in, yeah in general yeah they're they're funded by grants um yeah am i wrong about that eliberto no i think i think they are funded and i don't i mean this is part of the challenge right i don't know details of how much of that uh, funding for core lead is is an angel initiative? How much of that is um, general fund or uh, safety fund, public safety fund, and how much of it is um, grants? And so I think that's that's you know that's where that's where it starts getting a little complicated um, to just do a blanket statement of ten percent. Um, so, but I also think we're not really like that's council's job to sort of sort this out and figure right. out where the funds may come right. from. Our purview to be able to figure that out in a letter. This, you know, that's not that's a huge project, right? Our job is just to make them have this conversation and get the ball rolling. Right, right, I, right. I think that the the email that was forwarded from. Council member Christensen, I think, said that um, I thought it said 874,000 for those programs came from city funding and the rest of the two point something million was through grants. But I don't know the source of that funding. But regardless, I mean, obviously, we don't want those programs to be terminated. Maybe we don't have to even reference those programs. I don't know. I like the sentence you you mentioned, you know, that was in your letter i think we can cut and paste that right in there and just say hey these are the kind of programs we want to encourage you know that's i think your sentence was was right on, on and that that's the kind of policing and community service that we're looking for not the the violent aggressive approach that we're trying to get away from so yeah mm -hmm. i think so i think that's that's a good point um i think the other thing i would say is about longmont pd and and um you know and i think so recently, Madeline, your sister, and I, and I haven't listened to all of it. I need to listen. And Mike Butler had a really good conversation. Um, and so I just want, want to be careful that we, well, I, yes, no police force is immune or, from these issues. You know, Longmont has been a longtime leader in, in really collaborative community policing. Um, they've been recognized uh, for many years and, and a lot of it has to do with Mike and, and so we want to make sure that 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 work continues um, so we, we also think about what our role as a board is in the f crafting the attributes for the next public safety chief uh, piece so I, just, I just want to make sure that that that's not again I agree that no police force is immune from what we were talking about and Longmont has years of working toward improving their community policing and collaboration with the community. So I wanna be careful with that. Do you think this, I, I don't interpret this letter to condemn this police department. I interpret this letter to say, there are just things that police are not necessarily best trained to accomplish and if we, transfer funding to people who are better trained to do those things, everybody will be better off, including the police. But I don't know, maybe that's just because that's my own bias in, in reading this letter. I mean, I, I will also throw in too that, you know, one of the things I had suggested at, at the meeting and that I had added into my letter, and maybe this was just me, and, and if it was, I, I'm not gonna belabor this, but I had suggested that we consider asking the council to request feedback from groups um, to see what their experiences are with the police. 
And I, my goal on that was twofold, right? Like I already believe these things are happening and to a lesser extent in Longmont, because I think Longmont has a better police force than some places like say Aurora, right? But I think that other people need to be convinced of these problems. And one of the ways you convince people is to show them how other people that don't mirror them are experiencing things. So I thought that was one way that council could perhaps have their eyes opened or open members of the public's mind to some of the issues that are, are problematic with policing. But I'm not stuck on that idea of them doing that. And as I said at the meeting, I do think I, you know, as a white person, I have a tendency probably to overly study things instead of just getting it done and, and pushing the envelope. So maybe throwing in a request to do some um, community information gathering is a bad idea because it might sort of slow things down. I don't know. You know, I think maybe we have a call to action section at the end of the letter that says, you know, here are the here are the call to action points. And maybe one of those is, you know, solicit feedback from the company about their interaction with the police department. And another one is, you know, analyze the budget of the police department. And, um, you know, there's a couple other ways. I mean, maybe just to couch all these things we feel like should be added to the letter without feeling tied to just stuff it into the pros and still make it flow right because when you just mm -hmm. the more you edit some of these things the crazier they get so maybe if we just have a call to action section um where you know if you need just a bullet point here's what we're asking the council to do you know pull money from police and assess, evaluate the situation all that well i wonder if so i guess my question is again i i i I've been pretty straightforward and I'm, I'm concerned about, you know, that first, that second paragraph is how far will they read beyond that before dismissing it? Um, so maybe if we say something like, and that call to action, what you just said, Graham, analyze the budget and see where, if that's possible or where would it be possible? you know, and would that give it more uh, of an opportunity to be um, a, a conversation starter? I think there's a high value in ensuring this letter has, makes people uncomfortable, that it is okay. intentionally unpalatable. And uh, I don't know, what do you think, Madeline? Yes, exactly, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, that comp, uh, an in, uh, 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 heightened or too high, too much uh, uh, of, uh, uh, they need to be uncomfortable. They really do. To, that, I think that's what they meant when they said we needed to put more teeth in it. And I think that's what Karen was alluding to. Um, and I just know that based on my, my experience and many of these kinds of things says that you get one shot. So if we, we, we got to go in and do a bang, um, you know, from jump street and then otherwise it will get pushed off and we, you know, and then to, for us to bring it up later, it's not going to have the same value. So yeah, we, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Graham to answer your question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I don't know. Um, there may, may be, uh, based on how I structured it, um, perhaps we want to reverse <laughs> reverse uh, uh, paragraphs here. The first and the second. Yeah, the, the bottom. Go to the bottom. Um, I can't even get my. Okay, here we go. Let me pull up my copy here. We strongly believe that the repurposing of funds would be a major opportunity for cooperation and I believe between the police and the community. Somehow um, that's more of a summation. Um, I mean, uh, yeah. To, to keep in line with what you what we're saying, maybe um, some of the stronger points were made at the end rather than the beginning. I don't know. What do y'all think? I mean, it, the letter's only, uh, it's only one page, right? Like, is council really going to read the first paragraph and just toss the whole thing? Like, 
Well, mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I, I'm talking more about if, if definitely the 10% is a, is a glaring um, aspect of the letter, like you said, like Graham said, it, it will make them uncomfortable. And, and I think the, the I mean, question- I mean, clearly it's provocative. Right, it is provocative. And, you know, and, and, and the truth is, I don't know what, you know, council will completely respond to this. Um, I'm just, my goal, and I think Karen's goal is well is, we strongly want to support the board or feel that the board is that, that the underlying goals of the letter are important. Um, I also want to make sure that we address what, like I said earlier, what is our role, right? So at this point, it's, this is very much focused on, on Longmont Police Department, this letter is. Um, uh, and what role do we have in this effort? Um, you know, I was telling Karen, I mean, I'd like to see the board take a deeper look at what, you know, equity, inclusion, diversity is beyond just, you know, we, we, have, a, we have a table and people say, yeah, I have a person of color on the board, which I think is important, but I, I, I think it needs to go deeper than that. Uh, for example, in my mind, we could add a question in the application around, so what does equity look like in your programs or what are, how, how is there equity in your outcomes type of question uh, to have our, our nonprofit partners think about it. Um, so um, I guess yeah, that's, that's what, we're, what we're thinking about. We want this to be a successful effort and, and, and maybe success is not defined, maybe success is the uncomfort, I don't know. Uh, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm going, that's my perspective. I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of value to pushing it and making it uncomfortable and having it be provocative because otherwise it's just one of those like, yeah, yeah, we need to not be racist kind of letters, right? Do I really think that council's going to take 10% out of the police budget and give it to housing and human services? Uh, no, but I think it's a hugely important conversation to have. And hopefully this is incendiary enough that they will have that conversation. And if they say no, they're gonna have to tell us why. Right. So, and so yeah, other alternatives, yep. if they say no, you know? Which is why I think like a call to action section might be helpful too, because then like we can try and accomplish some things, although it might water it down. So I, I kind of went back and forth on this issue. I, I don't know. So I think Eli Berto, this this group is saying we want to kick the door in. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Well, and, and, and again, so, that's, that's, sorry, that, no, and that's and that's why I think it's important to remove unanimous uh, because it, it it won't be, and, and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and we'll have to see what the outcomes of, of that are. Can we make sure and get all the key edits that were from uh, your letter, Deanna? Yes, yeah, so let, let me, let me, mm -hmm. anything else on Madeline's and then I can switch over to Deanna's. I mean, I wrote stuff down that I will try and uh, I mean, I may not be able to wordsmith it, but I will at least put comments on it around you know, call to action around, do we potentially, uh, what I wrote down is do we, uh, to, to Madeline's point, uh, do we re restructure the letter or, you know, move paragraphs around and things like that. Um, that's what my notes are saying right now. Um, and, and then maybe we have a final conversation at the next, the board meeting next week that we have to still set up. Uh, mm -hmm. So is there anything else about this, this letter before I show you? Um, so before we move on, I guess, can we just step back to this restructuring of the letter a little bit? Like, okay. and, and sort out to Madeline's point, whether it makes sense to move the, 
Okay, so if we have the 10%, I'm not speaking complete sentences, but let me give it a shot. So if we move the 10% request to the end of the letter, is it more likely that people are going to read through it and have an open mind? Or do we want to start it off with like a pow 10% and here's why? I don't know. I'm trying to pull it up. I've lost my... I think you got to start with with the pow. I mean, and you know that's why I put it in the first paragraph was that you know you lead in with what what are you asking? You know, if in the first five to seven sentences you can't communicate the core of your issue, then you lose my attention. You know. Yeah, um, my, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, I agree. Which is and why it really isn't that long. So to that end, in terms of restructuring it, I think. I agree. Like I, I, I want it to be um, confrontational and as I said, incendiary to a certain extent. So I don't know that we need to restructure it to, to move paragraphs around too much. Okay. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I wrote it that way on mm -hmm. purpose, but, uh, but I, no, I was just saying if it, I don't have any vested interest, if we need, if it could be more effective to move, a sentence or a paragraph and and it's going to work and I, i'm not i don't have anything tied to it i, mean, I think know. it flows really well the way it is madeline well thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> i'd like to see i'd like to see yours um uh, i mean Really, I, I just worked off of grants and added a couple of sentences in. I added a paragraph about, um, you know, I, undertaking some feedback from groups who have experiences with the police department. And I had added in that those couple sentences about maintaining programs such as Lead Corps and the Angel Initiative. But that's really the only difference um, from Graham's letter. So yeah, and I, I, that's probably going to be a concern. So if we uh, could find a place to add it. Uh, Cause I did uh, every, yeah, I use grants basically as the basis for it, you know, everything I wrote. So yeah, but I think to add, cause that's going to be, that was a concern that was expressed in during the meeting, but I don't think people knew that the funding, you know, was uh, aside from what we were asking. Did you think that they that 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 they they were able to separate those, or did they know that, or what? I don't think the group knew that, and I think that's why um, Councilwoman uh, Polly had us read that, had it poured. Sure. In. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to add that um, um, in somehow, Here, yeah, somewhere. Here's, here's the piece. There you are. Okay. I like I like both of those. I like them. Yeah, I say we just add those. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I realize I said people experiencing homelessness, and I know that that may not be the correct term. It may be we should be using unhoused. I just you basically know, copied this from the minutes. Yeah, um, that's the that's the general term right now. Is not the previous term was homeless people, and then it's mm -hmm. now people experiencing homeless homelessness. I put them both in. I do a slash unhoused home because I think it the uh, mm -hmm. unhoused is too politically correct mm -hmm. to mm. me. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's not a politically correct condition. <laughs> <Exactly>. Word. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, unhoused sounds softer, and homelessness is is real. <laughs> it's just like this letter. Just yeah. like this letter, we can't can't dress this thing up. No, we can't. We get yeah, 
And that's what's going to get, unfortunately, that's what it's going to take to get their attention. You know, it's just the way it is. The truth of the matter. And that's, we, we want to get their attention. We don't want, you know, we don't want it. Like we said initially, we, it, it, this needs to be uncomfortable. What about the undertaking of comp comprehensive analysis piece? That's the other piece that you added. I mean, that really I just added to the to Grant's final paragraph. But like, I, I don't know that we need to like reiterate that somewhere else in, in Madeline's letter, right? Like, because I already suggested it above. Like, I don't think we necessarily need to say it twice. Okay, so just really add. You're saying really add these two pieces. I mean, that's okay with me. I wrote them. <laughs> yeah, I say we add those. As long as it stays under two pages. I right, I agree. Right. Yeah, really. I got to say, this conversation didn't go the direction I thought it would. I, th I thought everybody was thinking the letter was too strong and we had to soften it, but... Um, Maybe, you know, a week of everybody thinking about it um, will sort of come with a different perspective. I mean, I spent a lot of time thinking about the 10% issue, Grant. Like, I, I, a lot of, Graham, Graham, um, over the last, you know, however long it's been. So it was thought provocative for me as a human, for sure. And we've been think we've been thinking and talking a lot about it too, and I still have my concerns, and 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 maybe that is that is okay. And um, Karen will have her concerns, um, and other board members will have their concerns. And again, which is why we're moving the removing the unanimous piece because uh, we may not reach consensus on this. You know, it may have to be a majority. Uh, Alberto, will we be able to pull up the document? Will we be able to pull up the document like you have and edit it in real time so we can get to something we can get through? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I don't see why not. I mean, this is easy enough for me to do. Um, um, I mean, it'll probably go out and it'll also go out with the packet. You know, uh, last time it didn't. And, and I'm not sure there's anything else on the agenda for this special meeting that we're going to call next week. Um, mm -hmm. I'll check with check with Brian, but I think this is the agenda. Uh, I think this this subcommittee was tasked by the by the board to do what it's doing, revising. Um, but if this is where the subcommittee wants to go, uh, you know, then then this is where the subcommittee wants to go. Is our advisor? How do you? What's your read on it? Well, I think I've I've I've, I've shared my concerns. Um, you know, so my, in in I, I hope that it it doesn't stymie the conversation. You know, it, it feels a little police heavy, um, and and not as much about human our role, the human service side of it. Um, so that's my concern. Um, mm. Is it? It just feels very police heavy. Uh, and almost punitive to a certain extent. I don't think it's meant to be punitive, but it it it, it does come off a little punitive. No, oh. because like I said, like I said earlier, we, we're in a we're in a budget crunch. Uh, they just said we're eleven million in a hole. So to take ten percent, somebody has to go. Mm. Well, I mean, I can't speak to that. I mean, twenty-one million dollars. You know, I, I haven't seen the breakdown, but um, I got to believe there's some large chunks in there that don't don't require layoffs. That was my thinking as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. I guess That's that would be, a, don't you think that would be, is there any way for us to know that? Uh, can we, uh, what will it take to dig so we we can know? That because otherwise we're kind of going in blindly, saying things, but 
it would be more comfortable for us, you know, to to know. Is there a way to know that, uh, Alberto? That's a great question. Uh, I, I, off the top of my head, I don't know. I could, I could definitely explore with Karen and 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 try and dig that up between here and next week. Um, right, that we, would be very helpful. Can we ask the police, the chief of police, and just say, "Hey, man, like ten ten percent? Would you have to lay off people? What do you think about ten percent?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would what would this do? Can what we invite him to the meeting? That's another great question. Um, yeah. I'm going to write those down. You know. Yeah. I imagine a chief of police has some pretty thick skin that he would be able to to look at this and us going to him and saying, hey, we're drafting this letter and we want to get your feedback before we send it to council. Can you give right. us five or ten minutes of your reflections or thoughts on this so we can make mm -hmm. a more effective, like join with us. And then maybe it's an even more effective letter. Yeah. Um, not to yeah. say he'll agree, but. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, we'll get a sense, though. But he, we'll definitely get a sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I can, I can totally, I, I can talk to Karen about it and see what she thinks. So, but just so you know, right now there's an interim police chief because Mike right. uh, yeah. retired as of July third, and and Rob Spenlow is currently the interim public safety chief. Um, so. But I can I can definitely talk to Karen about her thoughts on inviting uh, the police chief or the not I guess the public safety chief um, to to the meeting. <laughs> Did I get that right? The public, yeah, yep. Yeah, because he's police is one. So public safety has both fire and police. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So anything else? Um, yeah, I've shared my concerns. I've shared. I've I've heard yours, and I think that, you know, it, it's it's it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the board responds. Um, and again, I'm I'm I, I will have the conversation with Karen and see how she responds to get her feedback as well. Um, but I just want to make sure that that the subcommittee, you know, I, I've taken some notes and I can write something up and we can put it in the packet. Um, and just want to make sure that the subcommittee um, uh, is good where we are now. Um, adding this, adding these two pieces to it, uh, we're going to leave the structure as is in Madeline's. Um, so going back to Madeline's, I'm going to stop sharing this. I'm going to go back to Madeline's. Are we saying that we don't need that call to action? That that because of the way we're doing it, we don't need that call to action, Graham? I'm going to go back to Madeline's. I think that's right. We yeah. don't need it because we've included Deanna's uh, paragraph about soliciting feedback and, and includes those items I was thinking would fit there. So that's good. Okay. And where do you think, just, just, just to help me, because I'll put this together, but where do you think that between which two paragraphs should we add those? Mm -hmm. Let me see. And then I have a question about this sentence. I, I mean, I read it, but now I'm reading it again. And and Madeline, I'd love to get your thoughts on what you, what is, in your mind, what does this look like? I want to highlight it here. Yeah. 
Um, we extended uh, back to great support, hard working, well intentioned, and much needed police force. Saying that in those particular situations, yeah, like it, it says, um, in situations that are, are more health related, I mean, more mm. mental mental illness related as opposed to crime, uh, it, it, we need to have that special. There's another element of, right. of uh, employee or a worker that right. would address those kinds of situations. And we, it's important that we um, identify that, identify it uh, and kind of restructure to fit those situations. I'll give you a perfect example. In uh, Memphis, there was, and this was a few years back, but to show that police officers were not trained to handle uh, calls that were more, um, uh, more more related to mental illness as opposed to a crime. Mm -hmm. And they ended up shooting the guy because they, <laughs> they thought they, in, their interpretation of what was going on was completely different and was totally in line with what they were trained to recognize. They were not trained to recognize mental illness. And right. so when, he, when they perceived uh, him to be coming toward them, although there were many, 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 many feet between them and him, uh, they, they took it that their lives were in danger. When in fact, you know, if we looked at that today, Mm, probably not. That 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 situation, that man would probably still be alive. Right. Okay. Had we, yeah. So. <clears throat> okay. So maybe that's, that's where that's where it belongs. So I guess where I'm where where the reason I asked is because where I'm struggling is how do so I I, I I totally see what you're saying and how do we recognize so that that's exactly the situation where lead and core would fit in. Right, that's that's their role to have mm -hmm. a mental health provider to 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 address someone going through a mental health crisis or substance mm -hmm. abuse. I mean, so, so, I guess that's is that where we put it in. We we, we think while we recognize that Longmont has these great programs, you know, and, and then you know, um, we still recognize the efficacy of taking police out out of the, the equation. Uh, I'm just, I just want to make sure that those things um, are not too, um, uh, what's the word I want to use here? That they jive well, right? Because you, yeah. 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 So we're saying here in this statement, we're saying that we got to get police out of it. But then we also say, but we recognize that police has really good programs to address mental health uh, and substance use issues. Yeah. After I wrote this, I, I had a conversation uh, with someone yesterday, I think, or day before. It was subsequent to me writing this. And they told me that when they get calls um, where it's suspected that it's more of a mental illness situation, that, that on calls like that, that, they, that the police don't go out alone anyway. Right. Is that true? Yeah, well, that's, that's what CORE is all about. It's called CORE Responders. So okay. It, so if police get a call that says, you know, we have some someone that is doing that, that is associated with mental health issues, then mm -hmm. dispatch and the police officers immediately get connected with the co-responder. And mm -hmm. I've seen it happen here in, in, in I was going to go get coffee and there was a gentleman outside Ziggy's and you could definitely tell he was having some type of psychotic event. Mm hmm. And it, there was a police officer there, but more importantly, there was a couple of uh, co-responders, mental health professionals there as well, trying to de-escalate the situation using yeah. their mental health skills. Yeah, yeah, yes. So that's, yeah. That's, 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 that's my, how do we jive that together? So I, I totally recognize that's a true yeah. statement. And it's also true that Longmont's a little different because we do have these programs. Well, maybe there we would... Um alter it just a bit to say let's uh, let's create a partnership uh, or let's state it as as a partnered effect 
okay. would be more um, more in line with what we're what we're suggesting, what we're thinking. Yeah. So that that yeah, let's alter that. I'm gonna see just in red, just for me for for notes. <clears throat> And then maybe add Deanna's stuff as the next paragraph. Yeah, they, yeah, there we go. And I think those are great <laughs> programs, and I, I give a lot of credibility to the police department for taking the initiative on those. But I don't think they're great programs necessarily because the police are involved with them, right? Like, those yep. would be great programs without police involvement. So I think they could be administered by somebody else. Right, and you put that there, and, and, and again, I think this, that's a that's a I don't know if we can address it completely in this letter. I have my concerns about who else could do it. Um, yeah, you know, in, in particular because, and and this goes to a bigger issue. So so that, let's talk about that grant money, right? You know, the police got that grant money because those whoever those grant makers are doing it. Uh, there's been a lot of grant money that goes to police to to that larger conversation that Graham's talking about value proposition, right? Part of the reason that the police got that grant money is because those grants are specifically set aside for police assisted diversion right um and they can apply for those and, and, and there's a lot of commitment to integrate police with mental health services uh that's not just in long month there is there is a movement out there around that so a, a regular nonprofit couldn't access those grants is what i'm trying to get to uh, okay, so yeah. the police weren't administering those programs. But right. you know, honestly, this is a problem for city council to sort out, right? Because I'm not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> council's budget. Yep. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. And there were, you know, along those lines, there were a number of things I read in the minutes, and I wrote them down as sort of highline things that might be edit worthy. And I think that, you know, I'll read them off here that uh, how much money are we asking for? How is it distributed? Right. Uh, where from the police fund does it does it come from, et cetera, et cetera? Those, I feel like we're the answer is that's city council's job to do that, and we could spin our wheels trying to figure it out for them. But we're just trying to to say, hey, there's a human service crisis here, and right. we need you know we need to move the funds from the militarization militarization of uh, departments within the city to the the support and care of basic human needs. So. Right. Uh, yeah, we can let the city. If if council wants us to figure that out, then that's another question. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, little mask us. <laughs> little mask, yeah. You know, one other thing I was I was thinking, and I said it the other night, and it keeps coming back. As much as I try to shake it out of my head, it keeps popping back up, and <laughs> and that is, um. Uh, what if they say, well, you know, we can do maybe 2% or 3% from the police, safely from the police budget, but over in XYZ, XYZ's budget, <laughs> we, we have a lot more flexibility. So are we uh, really limiting ourselves by identifying where we think it should come from or should we have a caveat in there some kind of way to say well yeah while well, we this is what we we recommend it because however if you know somewhere else <laughs> if you are aware of a source that would uh would be able to accomplish this and yet uh, uh, and you know, basically, I'm thinking we don't really care where it comes from, as long as, <laughs> as long as we, you know, are able to. Of course, we care. I didn't mean, mean that literally. But are we yeah. locking ourselves? You get what I'm trying to say? Absolutely, and I think we should add that in the end somewhere that you know that says. You know, the main point of this is to get funding for human services. So if people who are wiser and more knowledgeable than us can find some other place other than the police department, then great. So be it. Have at so, it. So be yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Because that's what, you know, I, I really, in all my years, I much 
I appreciate it much more somebody giving me the, the problem uh, and don't tell me how to solve it. You know, mm -hmm. you give me the problem, let me come up with solutions and then we come back together and you tell me why my solutions or my suggestions are not feasible. Mm -hmm. And then let's work up an alternative to that. I always appreciated that much more than being dictated to. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's... Well, as long as you get what I'm, what I'm trying to say, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Ellie, Ellie Berto, I would like to add to that main point clause, if you will, that this need pre-existed COVID, but that we have evidence to, that, that says that there is a, a uh, exaggerated or escalated urgency and a need in human services because of COVID. Because of um, COVID, exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then maybe we're saying that this is at least for 2020, maybe we don't touch on I mean, 2021, maybe we don't touch on the duration um, and let council figure that out. But you could make an argument to say, you know, this is what we're asking for the next two fiscal years or whatever it is. Um, so yeah. that's, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, I actually was talking to, to Karen. She was asking me, so what do I think? And I said, you know, again, I have my concerns about the 10%. I've made that clear. Um, I also want to respect that that's where the subcommittee wants to go. Um, but my, my suggestion to Karen was what I would ask council is, can you keep us whole? Right. I understand that, that there is a huge budget issue crisis. Not only is there a human service crisis, it's, there's also a budget crisis in the city, right? $11 point million in the general fund and their funds is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, and we were scheduled to go to 2.7% in 2021. But 2.7%, 2 2 while it's an increase in percentage from 2020, doesn't mean much if the, if the general budget goes down by 10%, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so my suggestion is the council, and again, to Malin's point, I don't care where it comes from, right? So, you know, it, um, mm -hmm. if police had extra funding, that would be great. Um, but could, could council keep us whole uh, and at least keep us at 2020 numbers um, or, or whichever is higher, even though I, I sincerely doubt, even if, and, and Karen said, why don't we ask for the 3% straight out and skip the incremental growth. But even 3% doesn't mean that it would, it would, it would be the same amount that we got this year, right? Cause it's 3% of less. Um, and so my suggestion would be, keep us whole at 2020 levels or 3%, whichever is higher. Sounds good to me. So I'll put that down. Yeah, I'm just thinking out well again <laughs> and wondering yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of marinating in my brain right now, and I'm thinking, well, what if you went across the board, and what would it do to take point zero five 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 zero zero five from seven or six budgets? You know, after analyzing, you know, the the everything. I mean, there 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 are more ways to to do this, to, there's no, I think that, yeah, I think if we don't lock, lock them in to one thing and uh, allow them to just, you know, explore possibilities that make it more feasible uh, to get it accomplished, it could be a lot easier, you know, than what it feels like right now. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Well, and, 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 but, and I'm going to go kind of against, well, okay, so how do I do this? I don't want to contradict myself because I do have a concern for Tim. So the point of 10%, if I understand you all correctly, is it, it, it's really to make council uncomfortable, right? To, to, share, to, to, to kick in the door, as Graham said earlier, 
on the conversation on what? The structural racism, the need for increased funding. What, what, so I guess that's my question. What is the goal of the temper asking for a, a you know, transfers of 10% from the Longmont Police Department's budget? 10% seemed like a good round number to me. It, it, you know, 10% of anything is not, you know, I mean, you could probably remove 10% of my body and I'd still be functional, you know, it, it just seemed like a good round number, but, but definitely impactful. So, right. And I understand, you, I understand you know, that. And, and the point is twofold. It is, I mean, I, you know, Brian was very good about making the point of, you know, there's a funding issue, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a police issue. Um, mm -hmm. And I get that, that you can pull those apart. But in, in the sense that it is a value proposition, I think that they're wed. I think that they're, they're together. So for me, the, the biggest issue is the funding. You know, I'm a member of the human you know, the HSAB board and there's a funding crisis and we need funding to care for our community. And then okay. um, the other part of me says, where should it come from? Well, not knowing anything, just being, you know, a, a member of the community, I would say, well, let's get it from the police, right? They, they're here to protect and serve. And there's a whole segment of the community that needs to be protected and served with dollars and the police, have them and right you well, know there's right. this in, this inflection point in society where we're reevaluating our police departments and really trying to hold them accountable and say mm -hmm. you guys need to stop being racist and killing people and so the way to do that is to take their money and that will force that reevaluation right um okay. so, so that's I why just, i think they're connected okay yeah. I, just want to, I just want to make sure that we don't I'm trying to, 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 to thread a, a very narrow line, right? Because I, 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 on the, I totally agree with the human services. And I also totally agree with the continued reform and improvement and anti-racism work that needs to happen in the PD and in, in fact, in all of us. I mean, I, didn't, I think we, we need to be very honest about, like I said, when I talked about earlier, our own home here, our own house, how do we make sure that, that equity and, and how do we, we, we break down structural racism within our own work? So, so I'm very committed to that. And, and I also very committed to my concern is when they, when, when they, in this letter, the way that they're, they're married, for lack of a better word, I'm just concerned about how it's going to fall. And, and, and I could be totally wrong. And I totally admit that. And, and ultimately, it's not even my decision. It's, it's yours. And I think you guys have made yourself clear. Um, I'm just trying to, trying to ask the questions and, 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 and advise the group on like, we need to be very, very clear and thoughtful and uh, around where is it we want to go. Uh -huh. I think the takeaway from this letter has got to be we need more money. I mean, that's the simplest part of it. Um, and 10% from the police department is, you know, a good way to get everybody's attention and get them to think about it and, you know, do the work that needs to be done to figure it out. Um, if there was nothing in there about the police department, then mm -hmm. council would be like, where are you going to get the money? Where do you want us to take it? And, you know, give us some direction, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know what? I was, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Another thought was, do we, yeah. I want to make sure this is not a part of, of our thought process, or if it is. <laughs> is or isn't. And that is, uh, is, is there any portion of us that that's identified the police uh, department as the source uh, to pull from because of the state of affairs of our nation and particularly uh, with the, uh, to hold them more accountable um, with what has, you know, what sparked all of this in the first place, which is, uh, you know, the Black Lives Matter and, 
of it. Are we trying to make a statement in that regard to hold them accountable or or not and just say, you know, here's what we want. We want more uh, money toward going toward our the human services aspect of our community and we don't care where it comes from. Um, is that? That's my struggle, Madeline. Yeah. <laughs> I think those things are linked and I don't think you can unlink them, right? Like part of the problem is that as a society, and maybe this problem is not very pronounced in Longmont because we've had a great chief for a long time. We don't know who the new chief is going to be and we don't know what's going to happen, right? I mean, I hope it's going to continue. But I think these things are sort of linked and that we have prioritized funding police to do things that police shouldn't necessarily be doing, right? And so if the police aren't doing those things, which is a whole sea change that is difficult to accomplish logistically. I understand that, but I, I, I don't know. To me, these things seem to be sort of linked and that you have to sort of reframe how you're thinking about how you address social service needs. Yeah, I mean, just think about, you know, the new PC title of the police department, public safety. I mean, we could be the public safety board, really. I mean, if you want to, if you want to play with, with meaning and names, um, feeding people and tending to their mental health and their education and their addiction and all the things that this board seeks to, to fund, um, that's public safety. And so it, this letter should, I don't want it to look punitive, L.A. Berto, it's not punitive. It's about, right. uh, hey, the police department and housing and human services are working on the same problems. And right now, we need some of those funds to shift to this side of the coin. Um, right. And they, yeah, so they are linked, Deanna. And trying to communicate that is, is a real art here because um, it's, it's a positive message here. It's not, I, I don't want it to be anti-police. You know what I mean? I want it to be right. anti-militarized group of people running around Longmont, you know, um, bringing force where there needs to be brought uh, care. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what, um, Graham, with you saying that, something else has hit my brain, and I'm thinking, okay, we don't want it to be punitive. On the other hand, we do at the same time, need to send the message, and I don't know if it would be in this uh, effort that we would do that, but we do want them to know, we do want a, that accountability. We want, we do want that up. You know, we, we do want that to be uh, prevalent. Mm -hmm. right. uh, but we don't, however we do that without being punitive, and maybe just, I don't know, uh, a little more thought and more work, maybe I could come up with something or we could come up with something. But at, given the state of affairs, you know, we're saying change has to come, you know. Mm. Now, are we going to use this, hmm, of this reallocation or uh, as a part of it? If we do, and if we are, I think it, we need to be real subtle in that element of it. But on the other hand, uh, really, really structured and focused and decided on on the flip side. Okay. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's kind of tough, you know. But we don't want to be we don't we don't want to come down, come in, you know, come down or make it a, a, have any semblance of a, uh, of appearance that that's what we're doing because we I don't think we are. Mm -hmm. That, I don't think that's our intent. Uh, but I guess the message, you know, I think it's going to be <laughs> broad enough to, you know, so I'm going to think that regardless. Right. Agreed. You know, so we just, we can't really be overly concerned about that. But at the same time, we got to, we have to, uh, you know, just state it as it is. I mean, you know, there was a man that was shot last week, African-American man. In Longmont, by the police. Yeah, I mean, it's still happening. And then when you, um, yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. 
But I think I think I think our direction and and for what y'all you said about you know well, what's our charge? What's oh. our charge? And, and it, that's pretty much where we have to stay focused. Otherwise, it's so easy to slip into all of those other very necessary categories, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, I I feel that that I think we have done a great job though of you know identifying and and adding teeth a little more teeth into you know what we were trying what we set out to do. And I don't know how. What, what do you think, uh, Alberta? Well, I, again, I'm going to continue to struggle with this and continue to read through it, and I I will take the the changes that you all made. And we yeah. will bring it back to our whole meeting. And and during that meeting, if you all see like, if you think that I didn't, um, you know, faithfully implement the, what we talked about today, feel free to speak up and say, well, no, I think this is more what we were thinking. I I, I will do my best. I've, I've captured notes. This is being recorded. I can go back and listen to it as well. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I I will do my best to capture what we've talked about, and 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 then at the same time, like to Grant's point, try to keep it to under two pages. Yeah, right. for so sure. um, I will do my best to to do that. Yeah, and, and we 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 have faith in you. We know you will. <laughs> yep, I believe in uh, you, Alberto. Absolutely. I would. I have one one last uh, request. Is it you? Do you think it would be possible for us to see uh, the final draft? Yeah, I think so. I'll ask you. To- yeah. Before you, I, council, before you present council, before you present to board, the board. Yeah, I was gonna say the council. Of course, you guys have to vote on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, I, I think I think you can do that to the subcommittee, um, and I'll yeah. send it to you buying copies. So you can all see it, and then you can all respond to me. I think that that's possible. Okay, um, good. I'll, I'll check with Karen to make sure, and if I can't, I'll let you know. Okay. Yeah, I just like to see what we what's gonna be given to them. That's as a result of our effort, the the subcommittee's effort. Uh, before, you know, before it's been, so we can just communicate among ourselves and to you directly if there are any significant changes before being presented. Right. To and, and I think before. that's the concern is if there's a, the, so the concern is, are we having an email meeting, right? Mm. Um, um, you mean just us, just the four of us? So I, I think that you could email me, but you couldn't uh-huh. email each other. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Okay. There's okay. too many of us, and we'll trigger the sunshine laws. Exactly. So if, if you reply all, or if you, if you if you include, let's say Madeline, I I write it, and Madeline, you have issues, and you include Deanna and Graham, uh-huh. all of a sudden that's a that's an online meeting, and then that becomes an issue. Oh. And they'll, they'll call the they'll call the police. <laughs> 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 they'll call the police on us. Street. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we we just want to stay clear. We just want to stay yeah. clear of, of any of that. So so for example, if if maybe we can the way it can work is I will send it to you individually. And if you all have if you all have you know suggestions Question, or whatever, whatever. Yeah, uh-huh. you can get them back to me, and I can try and incorporate them. And then you will you'll all see it together when the board sees it. Okay, and that's fine. I just I don't like getting surprised. That's all. I I like to avoid any surprises, especially right. among just us. You know. Right. right. So I yeah. think I think I can do it that way. I I would just ask that you only communicate with me. Yeah, um, that's that's good. And then that, again, that 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 keeps that I think that keeps us in, within the spirit and letter of the law. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 accomplishes what I I want, and that's just to know before. Presented mm-hmm. to the whole board, you know. Yeah, I'll try to get it out before the end of before the end of this week, sometime. Um, yeah, when's uh, our meeting? Our meeting's Friday. Well, we have to decide. We I, I think Karen and Brian need to decide that. Uh, we said oh. we, we, it was the week of the twentieth, so oh. I suggested that I suggested uh, the Thursday night, which is kind of a regular. But I I don't think that that's been decided yet. And okay. That's, I think that's that's Brian and Karen decided that. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just, I just like to know, um, you know, what we're yeah. doing before being, before being put before a group of folk. Because okay. uh, if we gonna disagree or, or or anything like that, I'd like to do that privately among us, just the four of us. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. Not that we would, but I'm just saying. Yeah. 
Uh, Eliberto, if I may make three suggestions, you could carry on to Karen and or Brian. One is that if we get this thing finalized, Brian read it to council because he's our chair president. I yeah, guess. I um, the second one would be to invite the public safety chief officer. I have that um, notes already. Okay, cool. Okay. And then the third one is you know, this isn't easy to group edit a document. I, I recommend that in terms of formatting, we, we do a, a screen share like you've done here so somebody can in real time delete and type. And yeah. then there's a, there's a function on Zoom where you can like put a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And I yeah. wonder if we, if we utilize that throughout the editing process just to keep a running tally of where the votes stand on the letter. Yeah. So that any given changes, we can see, okay, we have a majority now. Oh, we added that. Now we've lost some people. There's still three people who thumbs down. Okay, those three people need to speak and tell us, you know, what their issues are with the letter. You, you yeah. know what I mean? To really make it, because we're only going to have, you know, a couple hours, not a couple days. So Right. Okay. That's, I'll, talk to, I'll talk to Nicole about that, um, uh, about that function. I, 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 I admit I am not a zoom expert so oh yeah 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 but yeah that's all doable i agree on what you said i mean in terms of features alberto that's that's great yeah okay right. anything else wonderful well thank you guys thank all you right, guys thank you all i will try and get this out as soon as i can thank you okay all right. great all right thanks. thank you guys great work thank guys. you all right thank, thank you, you all have a good day. All right. All right. You too. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.